absolutely. And in fact, these boxes here, uh, which were for the slightly richer people, not the very richest, the slightly rich people, these boxes are called the gentlemen's boxes, but they weren't only for men at all. They were for anyone who were of a sufficiently high class uh, would go into these boxes at all. And as you can see, they've got a back on their chairs, they've got their own chair, they've got a cushion, they've got a little back to lean back on. These boxes would cost six pennies, six pennies, so about 30 pounds. Uh, we were just talking about pricing and I was saying that uh, the price is a penny in Shakespeare's day, five pounds today, so that's how much it costs now. If you want to come to this theatre, if you're happy to stand down there to watch the play, it costs you five pounds. Say again? No? Yeah, five pounds, five pounds down here. Uh, and they'd have a man on the door with a box and as the poorer people came in they'd put their penny in that box and then when the box was full they'd lock it in an office and that's where we get the phrase box office nowadays as where you kind of buy tickets from okay. this triangular room here this was used for sound effects quite basic sound effects we can see where all our musicians are just over there so all the main music will come from this bit here but this little window any big bold sound effects will come from there so a uh, cannonball rolled on some metal for thunder swords clash together for a battle there's a big bell in there now and they ring that bell when it's time for everyone to come into the theater so rather than having kind of as we might do nowadays a kind of voice over the tannoy saying please take your seats this bell here would be used to summon people into the field. And the original globe, the original globe burned down in a fire because of a cannon in that room there. Uh, June the 29th, 1613, a play all about King Henry VIII was happening on the stage. Uh, and they put a cannon in that room. And when the actor playing the king came on stage, they fired the cannon to show kind of how high status and important he was. And a little spark from there shot out, landed on the thatch roof, burnt all the way around the thatch, then the wood, the wood caught fire, and in less than an hour, the whole globe destroyed. Was everybody safe? Everybody was safe. 3,000 people, they all got out. There's a story about one guy whose trousers caught fire, oh. but his friend put it out with a pint of beer. <laughs> he was okay. Good um, friend. Yeah, good friend. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and that was, that was the end of the globe, and also pretty much the end of Shakespeare's career. Shakespeare retired, died in 1616, three years later. The globe was rebuilt, but the second globe pulled down by the Puritans. So this, globe number three, the third globe. Is that the, the first time they used a cannon, or had they done it before? And I think not they've done it several times. Yeah, I think they've so done it several times. It, it was didn't a fairly... seem like a totally dumb thing. To no, do. no, and they didn't put like... <laughs> it seems kind of it like a dumb thing to do. It does, it does, doesn't it? I mean, they didn't put a cannonball in there. You know, it was it was just it was just the powder. Yeah, but no, I know exactly what you mean. It does seem, certainly in hindsight, a really stupid way of uh, fire marshals. <laughs> no, they didn't have fire marshals, and we do have uh, naked flames in this theatre. Uh, you know, certainly for a lot of nighttime scenes, having somebody walking with a with a flame is a really good way of showing that that it that it's nighttime. And even though the building's made of wood, you know, it, it would take something pretty catastrophic to burn it down. Unfortunately, there was just a kind of perfect storm of, of uh, elements there that, that destroyed it. Any questions before we leave the theater?